Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Anton, and today's request is brought to you by Brianna. It was a request that we check out the song Hailstorm, or a familiar taste of poison by Hailstorm. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Okay, does this remind you of like Evanescence or what? This reminds me so much of Fallen Era Evanescence. It's crazy. My darling, you said, take your time and consume all of it. But the roses it's dramatic, man. This is gonna be my favorite hailstorm song. Yeah, I feel like this song is gonna go off later, man. Maybe I don't want to win. I breathe you in. I got chills here, man. And just to feel you underneath my skin, holding on to the sweet escape. Oh. It's always laced with us. the sepia tone at the end too oh wow okay so ladies and gentlemen that was hailstorm familiar taste of poison that blew me away i didn't know hailstorm had this in them actually um everything we've heard by hailstorm has been like heavy rocking there is atmosphere but not not like this is like evanescence atmosphere this is like dark brooding like i love lizzie's yeah her her vocal tone in this one you know what i mean and you know when i said i had chills what's interesting is it wasn't an intense part at all 
but it's like Lizzie and I think Amy has the same ability is like what gives you chills isn't the note it is like the brewing of the intensity below the surface and then you can literally feel like the because especially because I know who Lizzie is I know she's a huge chorus girl she loves her anthems and her passion and her power right I know that's in her and she, like again it, it's hard um, only remarkable uh, artists and singers can do this, but sing at a level of intensity and a, at a level of volume as as a softer singer. But can you inject, like literally, like inject into the voice the brimming of pain and, and of passion and of intensity? You know what I mean? Like Bono can do this. You too. Um, Amy Lee can do this. Um, a lot of amazing singers can do this, but it's like, it still kind of blows me away when they can do it because it's just, it's so like, I wanted to say it's so theatrical. It's more dramatic. It's God. It's like these people can capture the pain of life. They can capture the, the angst of like relationships you know like a lot of people they say i'm very articulate and i've been thinking about this like what is articulation um what makes someone articulate and someone else not articulate and like what i think articulation is and i think singers have a level of articulation too really good ones chester has this too of bennington where i think articulation is your ability to see the parts of a whole and be like, you know, like some people, they see a landscape and all they see is a landscape. They can't like in their brain, they don't know the words. They don't have access to how the, the how there's a house and there's a, a cavern, a cave, the different trees, different kinds of trees. All they see is this like they get swept up in the grandiosity of what the whole thing is, the whole tapestry. But I think what articulate people, their gift, and this is definitely my gift, is because everyone says this, like, oh, I like how you break down music. It's because I can articulate parts of music that other people can't see. Or people can see it, but they don't have access to the words to translate what they feel in their head to, to their, their voice. And the same way that I can break down music and break down voices and structures and lyrics and emotions, a great singer like Amy Lee or Lizzie Hale can break down the emotion can break down the feeling in their voice. They they have they have access to every little hint of something to 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 create a vocal tone that has access to all of these little things. And then as they're ramping up their tension, they can go, okay, I'll I'll ramp this tiny little thing up. Okay, I'll add this little emotion, this little this passion. Where I think like a to use the same analogy, a non-articulate singer they only have blocks and slabs of emotion. They don't have access to the subtle emotions, the subtle tones, the subtle frequencies in the voice and in the in the human being. Because when someone sings, they're translating their emotional state. They're translating themselves into their voice. They're 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 channeling themselves through their voice. And again, the best singers can translate and articulate all of themselves. Because all human beings are a collection of various different things. We're various emotions. We're competing personas, competing personalities. We have a grounded part of us, a passionate part of us, an emotional part of us. We're all of these things. And again, great singers can translate the whole entity of who they are through their voice. And because I review so much music, I can see when people can't do this. And it just, there's not a a definition to the emotion. There's not a, the emotions not defined. The notes not defined. Again, a great singer like David Draymond disturbed Lizzie Hale, Amy Lee can do these vocal acrobatics. And again, because they can articulate individual notes, some singers that aren't as talented can only go up and then down. Where like David Draymond disturbed can go up, down, up, side to side. Like, you know, great singers can just do this. They can take you on this, like, spiral of how they articulate a note and again it's just the best singers in the world and yeah th this was this was incredible i like i said i didn't know that hailstorm had it in them to create such a atmospheric piece of art you know what i mean i, I just i didn't know 
Because again, I'm so used to rock, hard rock, hailstorm. And this is a beautiful change of pace. I love this. I would love to see more of the brooding side of hailstorm. Because again, Lizzie, she she's so often utilizes rage as her emotion and anger. And it's really cool to, to see her articulate, again, the more subtle elements of anger. Like this still, again, there's still anger. There's still seething of like, you crossed me, you hurt me, you destroyed me. I'm addicted to you. But it's like, it's more subtle elements and hints of emotion than the fuck you. You know what I mean? That we're so used to in rock and metal, sadly. Um, a lot of rock and metal is the reason why rock and metal is probably my favorite genre is because of the access to the broad spectrum of emotions that has. But so much of rock and metal is still just locked into rage. We're locked into anger, locked into self-pity and victimization. And so I just love artists who can give you such a broad emotional spectrum. It's just, it's so exciting to me. Um, but let's, let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, let's jump in the lyrics now with this one. All right, we're back with Hailstorm, A Familiar Taste of Poison. And right off the get-go, um, I think the, the music video is different than the lyrics meaning in this one. Um, music video is about it, uh, like someone poisoning and killing somebody where I think that's like the physical representation of what the lyrics are about. I think what the lyrics are about is the slow poisoning of a human being in a toxic relationship over time. Um, the familiar taste of poison, your abuse, the way that, yeah, again, you abuse him, you traumatize me, you manipulate me, you cheat on me, all these things. And over time, these subtle layers of abuse, they poison me until I die until I'm a shell of who I used to be. I'm broken, I'm shattered. Where again, the video took that more of a literal perspective of someone poisoning you. But again, I think, I think, I could be wrong, but let's jump in this and see if I'm right on here. So drink the wine, my darling, you said. Take your time and consume all of it. But the roses were only to drain my inspiration. Yeah, the promises were spoiled before they left your lips. Again, I love the lyrics. Very poetic, very dark, very Edgar Allan Poe-esque. Um, what's interesting is Amy Lee from Fallen, um, she didn't... Amy's a poet too. But Amy, one thing I noticed about Amy and Lizzie, just, and again, Lizzie, there's different layers to people, but Amy blames herself and Lizzie usually blames somebody else. Um, this is just going up by the couple songs I've heard by Hailstorm. Is Lizzie's more externally focused, Amy's more internally focused. Um, one reason why I relate to Amy Lee so much is because I'm more internally focused. Um, like I even did a pit podcast yesterday that was very confronting to me because the guest I had on was very unusual for what I'm used to. And it was, it was very confronting. And I blamed myself after it for losing maybe a little bit of composure, a little bit of warmth that I'm, I'm used to having so much of. I'm used to being very even keel and being able to provide so much warmth for people. But when I don't have access to that, it's like, okay, what did I do wrong? Where to use the analogy, someone who's more externally focused would blame the person they're talking to as the reason why they don't have access to their own warmth. But I'll, I always take it on myself. Like, okay, how can I maintain my composure and my strength in any scenario with anybody and still have access to all of the aspects of my personality all the time? So just an interesting thing I noticed there. Um, I breathe you in again just to feel you underneath my skin holding on to... I breathe you, I breathe you in again just to feel you. Again, toxic, trauma-bonded relationship. Underneath my skin, holding on to the sweet escape is always laced with a familiar taste of poison. Oh, that's beautiful. The sweet escape is always laced with a familiar taste of poison. The intimacy, the sexuality, the the emotions we feel together when we're together is always laced with toxicity. It's like the love, the sex, everything is enrapturing. It is, it's like a drug, it's like heroin. It's like, it takes you in this new space, but it, it takes something from you as well. It takes your integrity. It takes your self-control because now you're relying on that person for that high. I tell myself that you're no good for me. I wish you well, but desire never leaves. Again, it's like, yeah, sounds like a drug. I, I could fight this till the end, but maybe I don't want to win. Maybe I want to give in to this addiction. The heroin is too nice. I don't want to be saved. I don't want to be sober. 
I want you on my mind, in my dreams, behind these eyes. I won't wake up, no, not this time. A familiar taste poison. Brilliant, because I've actually, I was in this situation with somebody six months ago. Yeah, somebody crossed my path and we had a really brief uh, fling or whatever. That's exactly what it was. It was like, I was like, yeah, no, this is not good for me. I'm losing myself in this, call it mini relationship. But I was so addicted to the high that we had together that I completely lost myself in it. Then I had to, I had to cut it out and yeah, say goodbye. But yeah, I was even in this six months ago and it it's crazy because yeah, it's like you know it's bad for you, but it's so addictive. The high, the way it literally lights up your entire body physiologically. When I would think of her or think of whatever, it was like it would literally, I'd feel this jolt of electricity surging up my body. Like I'd literally almost be like fucking shaking. Like literally, I felt like an addict. And I've been in this situation before in certain relationships, and I always know it's someone who I'm trauma bonded with. My traumas are a perfect fit for their traumas. Like I'm, they're usually love avoidant. I'm love attached. I'm ser I'm seeking validation and love. They're afraid of it, and so it's this dance of this hot and cold push and pull. But man, this was Hailstorms, A Familiar Taste Poison. Absolutely brilliant song. What do you guys think of this one? Let me know down below. And now, if you want to continue our Hailstorm journey, click right here. All right, see you in the next one.